Hello everyone, welcome back here with a little bit of a layout update. I was busy over the holiday season working on a variety of projects, one of which was this engine service facility. Originally, this part of the layout was going to be an industry, and we had a track coming right through here that would take some boxcars. Problem I was finding was trying to fit both the uh, spur track the mainline track and the signal I wanted for the mainline track had too many things in too little of space. The other thing I was finding that I wanted was a place to park locomotives. So what I've done is redesigned this area and made it the engine service facility. We have angled it off of the yard here in part to make it look more natural so that, you know, we just don't have a bunch of parallel tracks running into the wall, but that also gave me the longest uh, run possible for the track to get the most number of engines and it allowed me to have one wall section in front of the house wall It is kit bashed slash yeah, actually mostly just kit bashed slash scratch built from parts from the Atlas roundhouse kit Back on my very first layout I had purchased several of them and combined them into one large structure and was left over with a lot of these side pieces these two side pieces you remember uh, from another part of the layout. It was just going to be a background structure, but I incorporated it over here. For the uh, this side of the structure, I took a third one of those side pieces, flattened out the roof line as you can see, and then I noticed that the inset where the window is, so this part right here, was about the right size for a locomotive bay. So I cut all three out, and here we have them for this side of the structure. I'm calling this side of the structure the back, and we're saying that the railroad didn't need the third locomotive bay out of the back, so they added some corrugation and a vehicle access door. There was some damage or an old vent here that the railroad didn't need anymore, so they corrugated that over as well. So far, I am liking the way this is turning out. It looks uh, decently natural, and there's just about enough space for it. I'll keep you updated with how this progresses. I don't really have a master design for it. Things are just kind of organically being built on it. Speaking of locomotive-related projects, uh, I've decided to work on my Athern Genesis Western Pacific F units. Uh, so I have all four of the Western Pacific's final four from Athern's original run back in, I think, about 2010. I had first picked up engine 921 and 918. They come in a set from the local hobby shop way long ago, back when I was a kid. They came with QSI Quantum Sound, and I ran that around on the layout a bunch. I eventually put in Tsunami 1 and a high bass speaker in this locomotive, and then I just cut the speaker out of 918 and kept the QSI Quantum decoder. Well, I pulled these engines out recently and discovered that neither of them ran well. This one, I got response from the decoder, but the drivetrain or motor was just not cooperating. So we took this one all apart, put it back together. It now runs great. 19, 918 is on the bench, and it will, along with 913 and 917, be getting Tsunami 2 sound and scale sound system speakers. And I will also likely illuminate the number boards and replace everything with LEDs. Continuing along with the locomotive projects, here we have a Southern Pacific Jeep 35 Athern ready to run model. It had no road specific details. So I put in the Southern Pacific nose headlight cluster and the gyro light. And I've also put in a cab interior from Canon and & Company and lit the control stands. Um, the interior was actually just left over. I'd built, I guess, for another locomotive. And it was available when I was working on this, so I included it. Engine has a lock sound V5 decoder and some leftover speakers, so the sound's not super great at the moment. Um, but I'm still working on it. I still need to do some detail, like the piping that went down the front of the cab to the bell, and obviously the front pilot needs MU hoses and the like. This project was, uh, the inspiration for this project, if you will, was 
the acquisition of this Jeep 9. I got this because of Model Train Stuff's big sale. It was a good deal. I just got the DC no sound version. This has a lock pilot decoder. But if anyone knows how to quiet down these Athern Genesis Jeep 9 drivetrains, let me know how you would do that. Um, it's either the motor that's loud or the drivetrain. There's like a whine and a little bit of a grumble, but mostly a whine coming from the engine when it runs. I'm in a 10 by 10 room, so simply just adding sound and turning it all the way up is not something that I would really like to do, if you will. But other than that, it runs great. Um, I've already given its break-in period, so I'll just keep toying with it to see what I can improve on. These engines happen to be sitting on some newly completed track work. So I've done this entire section behind the Southern Pacific Depot. We had this track in before. On a whim, I put in this little side track that goes to a Walters number four uh, switch. The only switch here on the layout that's not hand-built. And that comes all the way back over here to this, which will be operated with Caboose ground throw, and then to this little spur here. It's working great. I love being able to kind of have a mini switching layout right in the front, in addition to the other secondary switching layout here in the back. And continuing on with what's up here in front, I will note that I now have two mo operational motormans. Uh, I've had the branch line one for a while, but I recently got the main line one um, installed and operational. Its point to point will be from the Southern Pacific Depot. It'll come all the way around the layout, come through the town, which is sporting a new structure that we'll cover in a later video, past the window behind the work desk, and it comes over here to the program track, essentially. Um, so I have a double pull, double pull throw switch that goes with this ESU lock programmer, and the sensor is right here. So I now have some point-to-point -point, uh, passenger service on the layout to go with a little freight operations in the back. Coming over to this corner of the layout, where we have the branch line motorman, uh, one of its endpoints, in the last update, I was asking what I should do with this corner of the layout. I wanted something kind of large or tall to help hide the 90 degree angle here in the back. And I was kind of concerned about using it for switching as I was planning to bump out the layout. What I think I've decided is to definitely not bump out the layout because right now I actually can reach back here to do some switching and uncoupling. Um, but what I decided was to make this a glass recycling facility inspired by one in Oakland, California in the Fruitvale District. Uh, looking at Google Maps, you can notice there is at least three sides of the plant that are, or at least used to be rail served when it was operational. These front two trucks will could do the uh, covered hoppers for the sand, soda ash, etc. And this back track will be for boxcars. It will be scratch built using parts from several Walters kits. Uh, the real life structure has a lot of patchwork and you can tell there's a lot of add-ons to the structure as it grew over the years. So nothing really matches, which is perfect for a scratch build like this. This is a Walters. Um, it comes from the U.S. Steel. Uh, I think it's one of their electric furnaces. Um, and this profile is very similar to some of the structures on that glass recycling plant. So I look forward to sharing progress with you on that. And I think those are all the main things that I wanted to cover with the layout. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Feel free to leave a comment for suggestions or thoughts. And I'll see you in the next video.